messed up. Hello? Yeah, we should definitely start this call right now because there's a lot. Let me get my headphones. Yeah, I think this is um the the this question is actually since well since version whatever the, the earliest version we've been circling we've been circling around like what is what is what is this right <laughs> like the most important piece <laughs> yeah it's all but 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 but. But because of our uh, process, I feel like the way we're doing it is is we're letting the gravity of uh, like our curiosities start to create the core of the galaxy or the solar system the way it naturally happens. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you ask that question, it made me think. Well, if we represent this properly, because I think it is these kind of things. You're talking about Sean, like how do you tell a story in the most basic fashion? Um, I mean, the the last place I remember us leaving it at was we were trying to constrict it to some sort of a process or a framework, and then we realized people just told them more organically, and we didn't want to control that as much. I think that's where we left it last time. We kind of um, played around with this question. We wanted to make it so that people would have a blank. A blank space to put data in, and as they added space, it would keep expanding. Do you remember that? Yeah, I actually remember that talk. I think originally we said we would have like whatever amount, like three, as what we showed you. But if you wanted to add more, you could add more. Yeah, because the thing is, is that there are going to be some days where, like, I'm just looking at my iPhone. Or some days I'll just take like a, you know, three or four pictures. The other days I'll take like 200. So my Maybe, you know, what what is interesting is, like, when I was putting together the top 20 photos from the last, or not top 20, just storytelling photos from my blog post, the the way I was thinking is I've got 700 photos here, but before I started to pick photos, I started to imagine in my mind what was kind of the beginning, the middle, and the end of that whole trip. So I started to kind of cluster images in my mind to kind of fit around what those three were and then and then once I had them I started and I even eliminated a couple photos and added a few but it, it did start with that three um, so maybe that's what it is maybe actually the, the, the original idea we had is, is it's one shape on the door and then you keep adding and it keeps expanding but maybe what it is is three shapes, and those three have the ability to expand, like as you add data to them. And then um, the thing I'm thinking of, maybe what's missing also is I think a lot of interactions like this, um, the engagement of it is done by some type of, you know. We hadn't really done a gamifying overpass on any of these mechanics. And I almost see that if I hear some satisfactory noise, or even hear some, or see some type of animation on the screen that that gamifies the experience of adding the data, like they'd almost be like these Pavlovian um, tripwires that would signal me to know that, you know, adding more data into this is a good thing. It's actually fun. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but all of a sudden, I imagine Tetris, and I don't know why. But it's almost like in Tetris, you have different shapes, right? And um, they interconnect to create a row. So whenever you make a match, you can interconnect different shapes, where in the end, it's making a solid shape out of that shape. And I almost feel like when we're when you're telling a story, to tell it correctly, what you're kind of trying to do is taking this data that are different shape, you can kind of equate them to different shape Tetris blocks, and you're trying to fit them together so they feel like a solid column, like of a story. Um, I, I don't know where I'm going with that, but for some reason that, that seemed interesting to me.
Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that, that seems to sort of like the satisfying interaction of, um, you know, how you, how you, how you build the story almost can be like building blocks. Yeah. Um, I was thinking last week, and I, I drew this out, was, uh, I was trying to think of, you know, the, the real problem with, like, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all this other social stories is that they aren't really stories. Like, engaging stories have a setup, an anticipation, a reversal, some sort of climax, a punchline at the end, a before and after. And I was thinking, like, um, maybe there was really just three concepts of where you start, or maybe this is how it grows out, where just one like one image is, is simply like a moment, right? So it's like an interesting moment because and you can upload the photo and then describe why. Another option would be like a before and after, and then you describe sort of what happened in between. Um, and then the third one is almost like a comic where you set up this beginning, middle, and end, and where the end almost has this punchline. Yeah, I like this. Because mm -hmm. the problem is, like, we have to find we have to find some structure so it doesn't just, you know, for better or worse, like, take a picture of food, right? That's, that's not as interesting as I took a picture of this food because, or whatever. It's like there's no, like, Jack no. Dorsey calls Twitter uh, a story in 140 characters. It's not a story. It's like a thought or a moment, and it's yeah. not engaging. It's just... It's just data, right? So how do we turn data? So and that 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 yeah, yeah, what he's describing, that's not a story. That's a blur. And you're absolutely right, Sean. And actually, what you're talking about right now, this got me really excited because no one's doing this. Like what right. you just described there, no one is doing that. Well, no. now now the thing, I I just got this image in my head, and I it's kind of and I think it might. Be effective in some ways is what you're saying because um it's kind of based off a lot of stuff we've been circling around is like the fibonacci sequence the idea of the golden mean and if you ever look at the way it's plotted um it's just bisecting lines in, in a space and then the space keeps bisecting itself right right so for some weird reason i see these three broad things you're talking about as not as tetris blocks because that's more like the interconnection but it's like like there's a primary drive of each one of those three functions, and then there's a breakdown. So I almost imagine that once you add the primary piece of data, mm. like you're, then you're then what you're doing to you actually add flourish. And this is actually what I do when I do art. Is uh, when I'm drawing a character, I'm thinking of the broad shape first, and then and then it becomes more specific. So good character design I have taught is shape. It's it's pure shape interaction. Like, the physicality of what you're creating is actually not about, um, it's not about the, what those shapes represent, it's actually about the interaction of those shapes in space, right? So I'm thinking about broad shape interaction first, and then once I have that figured out, I start to put little flourishes on, like, what does the hair look like, and, you know, where do the teeth look like in the mouth, you know, and I go almost through each kind of part of the anatomy and I analyze and I think of that like like how does this shape contribute towards the broad thing I've laid first so it's almost like when you put the first picture in the three pictures it's the beginning to the Fibonacci sequence and then any more you add should be um, it should intensify the meaning in some way of those original three pictures of the original three primary ones it's, it's like adding extra flourish or extra passes onto a painting, right? Um, so, so I think that these these mechanics, like because it's like saying that, I I think that that is, I I don't know why, but whenever you said that, well, I think I do know why, but but I can tell you when you said that, I had a very visceral reaction to it. Is and wow, I can't think of anyone that's done that before. Like put that, I think it's a one word thing. That really makes it simple, where it's literally. On the door, you've got the cube where you can enter in the data, and it's like kind of like one word 
uh, kind of instructions or two words, but no more than that. They leave the person with very, very simple, very simple uh, kind of linguistics. Hmm. I really like that. Because. It's like how do we how do we how do we give someone a, a turn this into a movie button or something? Yeah. So it's you can't you can't not be interesting or engaging or immersive. Well, I think I think you're right though. The thing that you touched on is I'm thinking about all the uh, most amazing, interesting moments of like my own life and it's because this because of that huh this because that that's actually three words describing it because this is my yeah this is almost like what will happen afterwards because is the center and that is the the past it's the state before so it's almost like a state change right it's zero one and then in between zero and one, it's the states change between the zero and one. So we're defining, it's weird, we're actually defining binary, but like the center state is binary at the same time. So is, are we coming full circle here? Is this really the perspective shift in the moment of change? Yes, mm-hmm. it is. Hey, holy shit, it is. That's, holy shit. It's, it's not just about the perspective change you're consciously aware of. They're actually happening every time you have an experience. I, I've never even thought of it that way before. That just blew my mind. Can we, can we surface and we surface that so that actually leads you to live outside your comfort zone? Oh my God! You get a reward I, from it. Mm-hmm. I just got thinking. I've never thought. I've never thought of like life like that before. That's fucking crazy, man. That that gave I'm like literally like the hairs on my arm are standing up. I've I've all I've never thought of it in terms of its constant perspective. It's constant. Yeah. Wow. That that just kind of blew my mind a bit. And that would force quality, right? Like yes. If mm-hmm. it's forced to to wow. say only use the ones where you perspective shifted. It's really the epiphanies, the insights oh. that connect the dots in your own life. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. You, you, do you ever hear the phrase, the only, the, uh, the only thing constant is change? Like, I, I don't, I, I'm never going to see that, I'm never going to interpret that, that quote in the same way ever again. Who said that? I don't know. I heard it in a hip hop song. I heard it in a hip hop song. American <laughs> education. Yeah. See, that actually is a story right there. The only thing constant is change. Who said that? I don't know. I heard it in a hip-hop song. Right. And, that, and because because there was a perspective shift, that's really the punchline. That's really the, the reversal. That's the essence of the reversal, is the perspective shift. <laughs> I mean, why am I getting so excited right now talking about perspective shifts? It's because I just had one, and that's my story to you. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is it, man. Um, so it's something about, I think, Adam, like, this is interesting, guys, because this just made me think of, like, a lot more. <laughs> think about the icon, right? It's uh, Chevron, and I placed it in a circle. But what that can also represent is actually standing at the top of the Chevron and looking at your choices within almost, like, your line of sight, right? Mm-hmm. It's almost like um, rotating to, 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 to assume a new position somewhere, which would be perspective shift. It, it, like imagine yourself at the center of that circle, twirling around and looking at all the possibilities. Not just before and after the situations, though. That's the, when I did the original model, this perspective shift, Sean, I was only seeing it outside the cluster of things that were happening, not the fact that it actually happens, within the stories as well. That's what's kind of mind-blowing about this. Is that in the stories, it's happened. So it is set in stone, right? So that's why I'm telling it to you, because 
this, I was, I was in this state, zero, there was a switch, switch, and now I'm a one over here for this reason of the switch. And here's my story about why. Well, the switch is really the invisible. So again, we're making the invisible visible. That is correct. And that's what we're focusing everyone on. Yes. And that is like the, um, the thing my, my friend posted on my Facebook once about how they are able to, they're claiming they could see Schrodinger's cat now because they could hover between zero and one in like a quantum state, which is, is just bonkers. I'm like, what? But that's what we're doing. Because we're talking about wanting to get into, we, we realize the direction of this AGI is only going to be developed in some type of quantum computing. So it's like we're starting to go there already with the way that we're seeing how the logic kind of threads together for our main mechanics. It, it's yeah. in one state or another, it's hovering in between. That's an important part. Yeah, the AGI is really, human humanity is really that, that which is in between. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is nuts. Ah, oh, that's weird. Think about what that means. Humanity is that which is in between. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> yeah. So we are actually in, if you correlate it to like uh, purgatory, right? That would say we're sort of like in purgatory state right now or something. There's not even like a word to describe it. Well, let's, let's break this out more meta. So, you know, let's look at our lives, right? All of us have a beginning point and end point, um, almost like so too, like a, this is kind of weird, oh shit, okay, so there's eight, so it's like an atheist, I have they, this recording. Their, really they would see their beginning point as a one, and they would see their end point as a zero, because mm -hmm. they don't think there's anything after, right, right. But someone who's more spiritual sees their actual beginning point as a zero state, and their end point as a one, and then, their death is an actual transition to another on-off state. Yeah, well, death actually is the epiphany, right? Like, if that guy, that, that neuroscientist or whatever, who told the story of, like, being dead and experiencing heaven, he came back with a perspective shift. Yes. Because right. he, saw, he, saw, he saw one. We're actually in zero. He, he, yes. Zero ended... He went to one, and because he was at one, he realized the switch. Is that right? I, I don't yeah. think. I think the epiphany doesn't have to be death, though. I mean, there's things that make people change their whole life, like a birth of a grandchild. Okay. Yes, I was gonna get to that, Jim, but that's well, not that's ultimate. not that's not the meta zero and one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the so ultimate is our life is a fractal. Okay, so your broad life is a big switch from one to zero, zero to one, however you want to see it. And then these things you're talking about, Chinder, within your life, those are fractals that break out within that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can take, so let's break it out like a Fibonacci sequence. You can bisect your life halfway, which is always extending. So imagine, if you will, this growing Fibonacci spiral that is your life, like the spiral that we're creating with these planets out in space, with our UI, as it grows, all the fractals grow inside of it. It's like this really beautiful kind of orchid or flower that's growing in a spiral, and like the stems are growing inside that spiral. And that's kind of the way I see the UI growing in a planet, but the, 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 the experience of our, of our lives growing, and then how each one of our experience breaks down. Because I, Sean, like when, when you when you said, isn't it a switch within each situation? That holy shit, like everything makes sense then. Yeah, it's every moment added together, right? It's every That's switch and every moment. Every every minute has sixty moments, but it, I mean, the moment can go ad infinitum. It, yeah, really it can just down. I mean, it can go down to a you know a micron. Like it, it can keep going. I mean, where where does it stop? It doesn't. Yeah, that's, that's the essence of an idea. Is th that's the basic building block, right? Right. So where the idea is, this is really weird. This kind of gets into some of my personal philosophies, but I, fe I believe that when people are creative, I believe they're actually channeling, um, they're channeling energy from other dimensions. Like I actually believe this. So I, so this is the weird thing about kind of discussion that Sean, you and I have had about the idea of like. 
and people believe in this idea of God, like to me the idea of God is something that's uh, like an overmind of like ridiculously ordered intelligence, like it's self-evident whenever you analyze the data in front of you, okay? So it's almost like to be creative, you're channeling almost like a God mind from another dimension. Um, and and, it, and it, 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 it percolates in the changes of these very basic elements, and then it grows these changes of one and zero. Um, this kind of sounds kind of weird stuff, but like I, it's weird because the stuff that we're saying about these situations, it, it, it just brings my mind back there again. It makes so much sense. Yeah, so I, I, based on what you said, Sean, I think the mechanic is, our core mechanic is, dude, it's moments. It's the states between. That's what it is, man. That's what we're exploring. Because when people just put up, <laughs> when people just put up their crappy photos on Facebook, they're not in between those states. They're not exploring what that is. Right. That's where we are. They're not there. Because you're only putting almost the results or parts of that state or parts of what construct what that is but no one has ever been mindful of that whole that kind of whole system the hovering between those states and how important that is and once again we come back to three it's one state i am uh i'm this i'm this because of that it's literally that simple. I am this, which is almost like the end result, because it's a middle state, and that was the state before. It's like a really simple, it's the simplest way of saying it. I'm this because of that. I'm this because of that. Well, that exactly. That's why. I like that a lot. So maybe the mate can see the what well, in the UI or the UX or somehow in the way we frame this like to the investors and stuff is somehow in a very approachable, easy to digest way. That phrase is somewhere there. That you know what it's like kind of saying like what's the point of all of our products? What's the point of telling stories? What's the point of getting? avatar what's the point of watching a movie what's the point of going to a door to meet other people what's the point of doing anything it's this i am this because of that that's the point the point is is i'm traveling from one state to another from birth until death i'm traveling from one state to another and every situation that makes up that entire journey that's the point it's the experience that's it Okay, so so take Wings Castle and yeah. the thing you did. How would we? How would how would you how would you tell this um, in this structure? Um, because you have you almost have to think about like what did I learn or something, right? Like when when did my perspective shift and why? Well, I think when I think of, the, do you mean the castle used as um, a metaphor for this, or like uh, the structure of the castle, like? No, no, no. Like um, very, very practically. Like if if uh, if this if this mechanic existed in an iPhone app, um, you know what? How would you set this up? It would be like this picture. So if you were gonna say, I am this because of that in Adam using the Wings Castle story, how would you do that? It's interesting because I think the that was a broken man coming back from the war, like kind of in the head, right? Um, and because is him actually building the entire castle, and this is where he presently is continuing to build the castle. But I feel like the big because that led him to this, or wait. Yeah, I'm this, as in, like, in the future. I'm this because of that. So that, in the beginning, in his story was, yeah, like I told you, he went to Vietnam, he came back to the state, 
he just messed up in the head. He fell off and he didn't speak like this. And then so, so if it was linear, you know, past, present, future, it would say, because I went, because of that, I am this, right? So because of, because of yeah. the terror I experienced in Vietnam, I, I built the castle. That's right. You, you just put together that that's a structure shot. So, so that's his story. Okay, so let's go more meta because you're telling the story, right? So, so what did it mean to you two? So you went there, it affected you. If you were telling the story of your trip there, how, how would you say it? Because right. I went to Wing's Castle, I learned, I, I mean, I don't know. Because I went to Wing's Castle, um, it's funny. I, because I went to Wing's Castle, I felt I learned more about myself, actually. It, I never told you guys about this, but it was really weird. There, there are a few people I meet in my life where I feel like I'm kind of staring in the mirror. <laughs> um, and it was weird. I felt like I, in a weird way I was staring in a mirror when I was talking to this guy. It was very weird. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's engaging. All of a sudden, you just got me hooked. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Yeah, you because, Sean, your question was good. Because it made me... <laughs> I can't stop saying because. Holy crap. Um, because it's <laughs> the economy. Now. I'm telling another story, Sean. This is the right question. It's the right question because it can't, can't even shake it. I can't get away from it. Sean, this, this is brilliant. Holy crap. Um, I, I can't stop shaking it because when I met Wing at his castle and started talking to him, I felt like I understood him. Ha! That's, wow. That was awesome. So the understanding comes in. It was huge, man. Whenever I cracked that joke back at him, and Jared said he saw Mr. Wing laugh, and Jared said, "What?" He said, "What the hell did Fragnar just say to Mr. Wing? He's laughing, he's smiling." Yeah. What What did you say? So again, I I'm hooked. I can't even remember. He was making was fun. Of me. He was making fun of me, and I just. But for some reason, when he was saying the joke, it didn't bother me because I knew why he was saying it. I was like, he's not saying it to make me angry. He's saying it to, see, he's like probing to see what kind of person I am. Right, he's testing, he's testing. He's and like and he's I, could testing see, I could see right through it. And I, in, in, in a spark in my mind, I could see the reason why he was doing it because, oh man, see, I'm giving you story on story, man. This is the right mechanic, holy it's shit. It's a fractal. Mm -hmm. It is a fractal, this is, which is what I was saying before. Um is because I've done the same thing. And even you, Sean, even you, I think you told Jared that, or you told Mr. Wing. No, you told Mr. Wing that. You said to him, you said... Oh, I was describing you, yeah. Yeah, Kragnar gets you. Yeah. Kragnar gets you. He's like, because... Oh, man, this is crazy. Kragnar <laughs> gets you because he does that to other people to test them. Dude, this is it. Yeah. Holy crap. This is yeah, each 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 stopping point in that you left you left me with a hook like between a chapter. Like I wanted to keep turning the page. I wasn't even trying though. I right. can't get away from it, Sean. I can't get away from the structure. Like once you send me down that path, I the story just keeps rolling out the same way. I I was you know when someone gets you on something and you try to get away from it but you can't because it's too right? Yeah. That's what just happened to me. Because I tried. <laughs> Isn't that how kids talk too? They're like, why is the sky blue? And they're like, well, because the sun shines through our atmosphere. Why is that? Space is black. Yeah. And they keep asking why, why, why. And you keep saying because. And then eventually it's like, I don't know the answer anymore just because. Because God made it that way. Well, well that's right. That, now that's an interesting insight, Kim, because. Oh, man. Um. <laughs> oh man, this is messing with my head now. I'm never gonna see this, this the way I think of the same way. This is actually messing with my head. People default back to God because in a human sense it's the ultimate fractal. We don't understand it all, so let's refer back to the <laughs> let's refer back to the let's refer back to the source code. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> blowing my mind. I, I'm telling you guys, this is really blowing my mind.
The question is, can it, yeah. Are you recording this thing? What's up? Uh, you're not recording this conversation. Oh, right? no, yeah, it's recording. Are you just kidding? I recorded every single conversation I've been on. This is one of the... Do you know who I am? This is one of the biggest breakthroughs we've ever had since we started building this. No, oh, never mind. I didn't record anything. I forgot it. Because why? <laughs> because I was so drawn into Fragnar's story, I forgot. Here's the thing, Chin. I'm really happy now, but if I found out you weren't recording it, because of that, I'd be very sad. And that's my story to you. So, <laughs> so the button, the button isn't I understand. The button is why? Question mark. It's yeah. a little kid question. It's like what little kids ask. Yeah, like duh. <laughs> You know, oh, 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 I'm clapping. I wish you guys could see me clapping here. Me too. Because it, sh it should be that question because it's getting asked. I almost see the beginning of this uh, software. Just like an artifact. Yes, yes. Yep. The child with beginner's mind, they're asking you questions. They're asking you questions like your child. Oh, my goodness. And that's, and that's where curiosity comes from. Yes, mm -hmm. it all ties together. Finally, fuck. This is it. That circle took a long time, guys. Uh, this above that my shit head. took like five months. I'm holding a triforce above my head right now. <laughs> I am. I'm like, what? I'm like holding it, and it's glowing, and I'm smiling my ass off because we just figured out the source code of all this. Holy shit. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, yeah, I just, that solves a lot of things, actually. I was thinking about yesterday with the confide thing, and I kept saying, like, you know, you talk, and then you say, I understand, but it's not I understand, it's why, and you keep asking the question why until they're ready to talk. That's, that's like, this bleeds like, into everything. That's what the psych, that's, that's what a shrink does. That's what a psych, when you go to a psychologist, they keep asking why. Yeah. That's how they get, that's how their mental therapy works, is you'll start to talk, and what the therapist will do, they'll ask you why. Or how did that make you feel? But the how did that make you feel is actually a why. Yeah. It's a how. It's a why. Yeah, and everyone everyone likes to have everyone has the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Or like to feel like they do. Everyone likes to give advice. No, yeah. This is you know when I was you know what happened right. with Kirby and me, right? And then I was saying, oh yeah, we broke up and whatever. And it's like why, why, why? <laughs> and it became this whole you know it it it's that same I think process right there it, you know what makes it what is going to make it approachable is it just it's just not this now this is going to blow your guys mind if you haven't thought of this already is the why question is a kind of um it's a very engaging one but if you don't trust the person asking it it can be a put off type of question like i feel like you're put, being pushy with that question but it's a little friendly tin toy that you have an attachment to? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that doesn't feel like a put off at all. It's it's like your little kid. Yeah, and he has access to everything. This is crazy because. Because why? Little, why? Well, yeah, tell us why, Nick. Why is it crazy? Why is it so crazy? <laughs> <laughs> because you because you feel like you're instructing the child robot but you're actually learning about yourself yeah and that that's all introspection is that's how you explore the final frontier right mm -hmm. yes that's philosophy it's that's archaeology into your own mind <laughs> i can't believe this this yeah. is amazing you, you like teach know. the artifact all that's, these things. that's the first step because you want to answer the question it's like just sitting there blinking because blink blink you know the answer just fucking type it in. Yeah. So, okay, could it even start with any picture? So, Nick, you just took a picture of your uh, cheesecake or your yeah. chocolate cake. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, because... Um, cheesecake because... Because when one of my friends made it, and it was at the last time I had it, it was actually at a party, and she put cherries on it. I don't really like cherries. But I would try because she's really good at making food, right? She's actually, her name's Ariel. She's really good at cooking. Every time she has a party, 
like she always cooks something and I always feel guilty because I start I can't stop eating. This is actually a true story. This happened. I'm not making this up. Um, and why couldn't you she, she stop eating? There. When the cheese was sitting there, I actually looked at it like a couple times. I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I was like, I really want that cheese cake. It's like 10 o'clock. And then I, I kept circling it, and eventually I just gave in and had the cheese cake. <laughs> <laughs> now, how much more engaging is that than just a stupid picture? Yeah, and I, I laughed at the end. Yeah, because yeah. I admitted the fact that I'm a failure at controlling my eating habits. It's funny. We didn't have to. We didn't have to teach you anything. It was very human. Even if I didn't know you, I could relate to that, right? Okay. And it was just. It just started with a picture of bullshit food that I don't care about, That's and all right. of a sudden, I relate to it. <laughs> Let's apply this thought experiment, okay? This is crazy. So, all of us on Skype, we have photos of each one of our icons. This is so fun. Ken, why? Why did you take that picture? Uh, that was the first time Kirby and I went away together. Uh, I think that wow. was the first time we really connected. Oh my god, this is so amazing! Keep going! <laughs> yeah, uh... This is real talk. This oh, is this is so real fun! Talk. Ah, can't help me! Oh, <laughs> it's coming up! coming everywhere! We figured it out! We did figure it out! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Holy shit, keep going! Keep I wish going. we got a videotape you. Uh, oh man, you should see me. I'm like, actually, my eyes are watered. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Keep, please, keep going with the story. I want to know. Uh, yeah, because uh, I've never taken her anywhere, and I really, we had, I think, a couple months left, and I really wanted to bring her someplace and just spend uh, the weekend while I had off for work. And, uh, yeah. Where, where was that? Baltimore. Why Baltimore? Because that's all I could afford. <laughs> it's so funny. Awesome. <laughs> but she'll never know because we got the help in. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is great. You know, Sean, you've been doing this for a while already, though. Yeah. You told me the big change with you, Sean, is um the reason why you were able to start engaging all these new kind of opportunities i'd say quote unquote business because it's not really business is whenever you'd always say i just want real talk but the funny thing is that it was in, the solution was in front of us the entire time we just never asked sean what is real talk actually and probably if we dug into that a bit more you would have just said i just well you had already told us you just ask questions and you don't say anything really other than that you let them ask the questions or you let them answer it, but we never stopped and thought, well, what was that question you asked? Yeah. Because it wasn't like I was not wanting to listen or I was just letting them talk. I was actually engaged. Yeah. Because some, the stuff they were telling me was fascinating. Why was it fascinating? Well, because they actually have real stories to tell. Mm -hmm. And why is everybody fascinating? Because everyone, all 7 billion people on this planet, have interesting stories to tell. Right. That's why. And, and what what out of your life is the most interesting, immersive, and um, uh, engaging stories that I can relate to? It's the hardest one. That's mm -hmm. what the model, so right? so it it dry, it leads you down that path. Even if you start with cheesecake, you end up at my best friend tried to commit suicide. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. You're right. Start at suicide. Like, start at cheesecake. I don't care. You're going to end up where we want you to end up. Yeah. Because the system forces you that way. That's right. Well, what right. I like is, I see, I what I see is the upload where it says grab any image, almost like in the mechanic, grab any image that you really enjoy, right? Or say something that has some type of meaning or some moment in your life that matters, even if it's a piece of food. It could be a piece of food. This a is a moment that matters. We were, trying to eliminate, we were trying to eliminate photos before, and now it's anything. You yeah, say, a moment that matters. I like that. Yeah. And, and, and you, you, you have them, you say every moment matters. Why? To your moment, and then they put it up. Yes. And then as soon as you drop it on the door, the door, or maybe the little rope, uh, sorry, the little tin toy, says why he asks why like a little kid and you can you can voice record you can upload another image oh man 
you can start to keep telling the story, and you can I go as long as you want. You can tell a novel if you want. I can take, I can put this sketchbook. I can just take a picture of that. I can take a picture of any one of my hats. I can take a picture of uh, this, this cup here. This is so engaging, man. It's like I just, I'm looking. Hello, John. Yeah. Your life. Sean's excited. Okay. Yeah. What did you say? Like. I'm looking around in my room right now, and I'm looking at all the objects and the clothes that I have, and every single one of them tells a story. Yes, yeah. the story is in everything. Gentlemen, do you realize what we've just done? We've unlocked every mechanic. To it's infinite. Huh? It's infinite. Yes, you know what you did? Unlocked, we have unlocked the mechanic to tell stories, engaging stories, about anything. Period. That is what we figured out today. This is amazing. Sean I brought real talk to the platform. We Sean just brought real talk to everything. Just, just try to wrap your brains around that word. Everything has a story. We've always said that. We just didn't know the simple way of, of approaching it, of extracting what is there, the, the, the energy that's waiting to be released, right? It's like vision. That's what we've done. We've created vision with everything. A storytelling vision. It's so simple. This is so elegant. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Because it's not just a question, but it's this little thread, this little it's this little toy that's asking you the question. That yeah. you you feels like your child. This this is like that puzzle piece that got hidden under the couch that you've been searching for for months, and the ta it's a puzzle sitting on the table, and you're like racking your brain trying to find this puzzle piece, and it's like the most critical element. It's like the main character's face, <laughs> face expression, and so you know like what the puzzle is, but you're missing the last facial expression to actually finish telling the story of the puzzle. Yeah, and you're tired you under the couch, and you put it in and fucking light exploded out of the workshop, and then you died. Yeah. Because you passed it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this is insane. Right, and so think about our think about our trailer that Jared drew up. The big thing is, he put the key, he was making a key, why? He put it into the door, why? <laughs> he, he, like, died, why did he do that? It's the, it's, it's leaving open these hooks. And imagine this, what if you, it, it teaches you to like, what if you set up a situation and you didn't give them the why right away? Mm -hmm. Think about yeah. how teaching it would be if you sent them a key to the why. That's what master storytellers do, right? They start to we, we start play around with these things. No, yeah, oh. it's like that, that chick from the Arabian Nights, right? She, she left all those stories with a, a why and if you survive. The, it's, the, it's the moment in between telling, giving them the setup and giving them the because mm -hmm. that um, is actually the game. I think this, this is insane. Mm -hmm. yeah, really what blows my mind is I don't think we would have come to this too if we didn't have the artifacts figured out because, um, there we go, I, there we go, back in the story again. Um, because the artifact is the vehicle for the why. It frames the why in a way that doesn't feel intrusive. You yep. feel like it's coming from a child. Mm -hmm. Skinner's mind. Well, Someone cares he, about you. Yeah, he really, he really wants to know. It's not just somebody going, oh, why? I don't really give a shit. I'm not going to listen. Right. He's sitting there on the edge of his seat asking why. And you know why I like Jared's brother so much, um, Justin? Because whenever I'm talking to him, he looks like he's really paying attention to your answers. I don't know if you've noticed that about him, but he'll mm -hmm. like look directly at you. Like all of his attention is on you. Yeah, that's if you think about why people actually divulge information, it's because why we've been able to have real talk is because we really listen. Yeah saw us really listening and caring. Yeah. Kept asking probing questions about it. Because 
why is just the basic one, but it becomes more granular, right? It's mm-hmm. like it's to incentive. Right. And you know, this is crazy. So uh, I've been saying that so much lately. This is crazy, but this whole idea is insane. I love it. Um, it's so so when I kind of finished. When I refined the design of this uh, uh, artifact a little more today, because uh, we like the shape on the front, the wooden kind of face. Love that. Um, it's this little kind of, I kind of modeled it after Pinocchio. And if you think of Pinocchio, he is the beginner's mind, like the why, why, why. Yeah. But the cool thing is on the back of his head, so the front side is the humanity, the back side is the technology, right, that's driving it. But he never sees that technology because it's back facing, unless he looks at himself in a mirror from behind. But normally he'd both get it from the front, right? Um, whenever this little artifact is talked, is asking you why, it's so weird. I see this in real life. I see 40 years into the future. I feel like Ray Bradbury as I'm describing this to you. I see little robot sitting there at your desk in thinking man pose on a little chair asking you why, asking me why. And when I tell him why, he's recording, he is the software, he is a, it is, it's not he, it's a reflection of me, and every time I engage with it, the circuits on the back of his head that look like an amalgam of a quantum computer and a Patek Philippe watch begin to glow and project holograms out of the back of his head. I imagine all this, it's clear as day. Well, yeah, I mean, people talk like this, they say, yeah, I can see his gears are turning. Yes. And that's, that's, the, that's the simplest motion that we need to show. When it's recording, the user feedback is the gears are turning. Yes. It's just like a tape deck, right? You know yes. it's on because you see it moving. And yes. you see it listening. Yes. That's what you see from the artifact. You see it listening. Yes. Now and there's, the, there's deeper, the deeper you go, the, the brighter it glows. Yes. And, and in the future, in the few, we, I mean, I can think of ways that we could viably do it now because I've been researching robotics actually. And um, there, and don't laugh at me for using this as an example. Don't laugh. No, it's funny. This is I, this is what happens when you're in love with something. You just like can't get enough of it. I I was researching the new Furby toys. Don't laugh at me. And the new Furby toys, the eyes use LED. Um, I use an LED screen and giant pixels to animate the facial expressions. And I was like, that's very interesting because they've mixed visual with this furry toy, the new furry. Mm-hmm. So it has a wider range of expressions. So what I see this artifact being is kind of about the same size as the vinyl toys I have. And then on the back of the head, it has this LED screen that has the animation. So it has gears on the back of it or something projected that feels like gears or maybe real gears but I'm, I'm talking about in a way that would be um, kind of sustainable to build and, and mass produce. If you had additionally displayed his gears in the back of the head and then have the animation of the gears turning, like as you're talking with it more, um, that that's something that we could actually manufacture now at cost. That's I'm so fucking dope, man. I, I actually am not a huge toy guy, but that would be so fucking cool. Like, I'm actually hyped to buy that. Yeah, so imagine this, John. Imagine a toy about maybe four or five inches tall, made of wood, constructed of wood and ball socket joints, the same kind of the marionette thing you sent over, but the proportions that I made the characters in like more appealing. The head is wooden and the back has an LED screen and that tells you as you're interacting with it and recording what its status is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, a little Which, iPod nano in the back oh, of the head. <laughs> I would light up, it'd be like Teddy Ruxpin, but a more advanced version that listens to you. And it could tell stories. It could record things and tell them back. Yeah, that, I mean, we basically did. We made Teddy Ruxpin just not so creepy. <laughs> and you could pose the little toy, you know, because it would have, like, the ball and socket joint articulation. So you could pose them on your desk and just have it sit there. And, dude, just imagine how much of a mind... Oh, man, I don't like to use swear words, but I have to know. A mind fuck it would be... To have this little toy on your desk, knowing it's the same type of toy that the store maker had on his desk when he was designing it. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yeah, humpier. <laughs> yeah, 
it's not just I get it, it's I need it. Yeah. I need it. That, I am telling you, the toy design I just described to you, if we made that, they would sell. No, they would sell, like hot so bad. They would sell so bad. Now, I'm thinking of like what I was drawn to when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah, that that'd be something I'd buy in a heartbeat. And look, it would be a wooden toy, but you could get clothes for it, man. You could get little, like little sweaters. <laughs> like a little cardigan, a little the, sunglass. The best part about it is the interaction is completely universal. Doesn't matter what culture, language, religion, no. wealth, status. No, it's just it just listens, and you. The, I love the user feedback. It's so simple that it just uh, you just know. Mm-hmm. And we can make different versions. So the more expensive one, you know, would be fully articulated and have a larger screen on the back. And then we can figure out ways of scaling down the same version of that for like a second or third world country, where it could be as small as the one that the uh, little girl had in her pocket, and it could have a simple kind of like solid or like a flash drive in there, right? And an LED that whenever you talk in it, the back of the head would just glow. It would just be a scaled down version. It wouldn't be as complex, but it would be the same. What? What did you just say about the back of the head? It just glow. Oh, I thought you said flow. Oh yeah, that too. It would just flow. I mean, same thing, right? Yeah. Um, but we could make different versions of it. It would basically be the same thing available depending upon price point. But dude, I'm telling you, this guy, uh, uh, like, you know, you'll you'll meet sometime is this Clem guy, Sean, that you I introduced. Uh, we were talking to. Um, he would shit his pants over a project like this. Yeah, man. Like, uh, if if the fully upgraded version, the most advanced version, was like a like a fine watch movement on the back. Oh, oh right. God, I would I would fucking save up my money for that. <laughs> the the watch collectors who are like insane quality of movement aficionados, like you could get you could get someone from Paddock to, I was just, to do John, this. I was just gonna say that. I I actually <laughs> when holy crap this is this is our imitating reality it's going on everywhere with this project is that when the time comes that we release like a super limited edition version I would want to approach Paddock Police about designing a limited edition of this where they actually do one uh whatever you call it uh gear whatever one complication or two complication type thing that would set with that would set the back of the head of this thing man uh, that you, would be this, cool oh oh no imagine remember we said the world you're terraforming your world but it's actually your life clock it like, is here that is it that's the grandest complication of all yes. is, it, is it as the gears turn it's telling the story of your life and it's like you have to the mechanic is you have to catch up to it because it's ticking away. Your life is ticking away. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sitting here in my office and there's this little clock. It's about um, a foot wide, a foot tall, a circular. And you just hear it going tick, 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 tick. And everything else is quiet. And the, the feeling you get from it is, wow, this is precious. Every moment is slipping by. I better use every moment not and focus on exactly what I want to do in this life because it's slipping away. It, it's funny because every moment matters and within every moment embedded in it, like a beautiful pearl in a clamshell, is why. 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, and how are you going to answer that? <laughs> what are you going to tell people? Crazy. I I can't believe it. This is the biggest gap we had left, and we just we not only filled it, but we put a fucking pyramid in that gap, mm-hmm. like a glowing one, like radiant. It does feel like the triforce. Like when Link picks it up, it's just smiling, and it's bigger than him, and it's glowing, and then it starts to hover in the air, and energize. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be a good day. Apple releases their new thing in like an hour. I heard the, the, the what's that? The new ears is like $2,000 almost. 
Yeah. So, and so, so basically, that basically my mind is freaking blown, man. Yeah. So that's that's the core. That's the core of the product. Yeah. We just have to keep thinking about how we can build it out and keep making it engaging. Yeah. The the core is this because of that, and the because is the why is answering why. So it's this in one state. Um, that was before. Because is the reason, and why is the question. You see what I said? That's four words. Actually, three words. Holy crap! It's three words. This, which is now, because middle state. That before, and why is the. Why is the fourth element that evolves out of the three? That's what drives you, right? It's the center thing. It's the center thing that the three that the the, 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 the three words are surrounding to energize into a circuit that create the fourth element that appears there. It's the center of the triangle, man. Why? Yeah, there's there's nothing. This does not exist in the in the laws of man. It's the thing that combines movies, comic books, TV, radio with the bullshit on social media, but it's easy to produce. So it's the immersiveness and easiness. I actually, so the reason I actually came up with all this stuff, because I was watching that Steve Jobs thing when he first released the iPhone, because he said three things, and then he started going through the problem statement, and he drew that graph, that those four quadrant graphs where it said, um, he was describing like the UI interface. It was like uh, mm-hmm. all the buttons were hard to use and the phones weren't very smart. Mm-hmm. Then he put iPhone in the upper right. So I tried to do the same thing for us. And I realized that movies, TV, all that other stuff, the great immersive stories, books, are hard to read because they take, well, they're not hard to consume. It just takes a long time, but they're hard to produce, right? right. So that doesn't work. And in social media, it's easy to produce, but they're not very much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no quality to either make or read or view. And so how do we combine the two? And and this is how in the upper right-hand corner. This is Adam. Adam reinvents storytelling. It does. It's funny because it reinvents it, but it it, it brings it so close to back home. It makes it feel so humble because it's just a little, it's just like a little kid asking you why. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so, oh man, the elegance of it just, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. Mm-hmm. Because who wouldn't want to answer why to an innocent looking um, artifact looking at you, sitting at the desk and just looking at you kind of like a puppy with its head kind of tilted and just go, why? And then whenever you start to answer it, you feel like it's looking at you and it really wants to know. Mm-hmm. Like it really does care because it's your friend. Yeah. Pokemon, you're my best friend. Okay, to the end. It's like a little Pokemon. But it's a philosophical Pokemon. Philosophical. It's, it's a philosophical. To Aristotle mind. <laughs> philosophical. Holy oh. crap, making a philosophical. You know, you know, I, I, I was looking for quotes about storytelling last night, and you know which one I found? Um, I'm going to give you two, and the first one, uh, I'm going to read you the quote, and then I'm going to tell you who said it. Uh, so listen to this. This is absolutely insane. It blew my mind. So here it is. We keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things because we're curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. I mean, that sounds like Steve Jobs. Is that him? No. Well, oh, that's Walt Disney. Oh, my God. It sounds like they sound the same. He's, he's describing Adam, like, to a T right there. We came up with it separately. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Let me, let me blow your mind again, Sean. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to send you a picture that as you were saying that, I kid you not... I was just looking at. Okay? Now, when you see this, both you guys are both, are you ready to shit your pants again? Mm hmm. Okay, hold on a second. Because this photo I was looking at, and I didn't realize this until 
um, I look at it longer because I one of my animation friends actually had it on his Facebook. Okay. Now, I want you to look at this and study it because when you look at it, I want you to think about what other movie models this. Oh yeah, this was totally out of um, Iron Man. That's right. They yeah, modeled to be his dad and like the 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 campground, yeah. Tony Stark's dad modeling the theme park, which was actually a hidden message to find a new element because his technology didn't have the time to find it yet. What is each generation doing for the new generation? They're pushing forward. They're pushing forward into frontiers, knowing very well when they pass away, there's still more. Mm -hmm. yep. Doors, baby. Yep. There you go. That's the mind blowing thing. Right as you were talking about doors, I was looking at that photo. Yeah, he built Disney World. Ours is just called something different. That's right. Yeah. So here's here's the other quote. This one's a lot shorter. Those who tell stories rule the world. Wow. You know who said that? So we're gonna take it way back. Plato. Plato? Plato. Oh, damn. Like those two, it's like those two quotes that I want to put on our site. It's like, wow. Plato had it right. Don't even take this. Yeah, you got to put up, are you, you got to front up Plato? And, and Walt Disney, like, shame on you, son. Like, you know what's great about this? Why I'm so happy? Because when you put something like that, like a quote, and then a person's using the software, and they go, I can tell a story. Like, they, you, the, um, the, the level of empowerment a person gets, like, just feeling like they matter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, everybody can do it, already does it. All we're doing is Adam, Adam's just helping you tell it a little bit better. Actually, I would, I would. Adam, you look better. Yeah, and not even just better, but I, I, I'd venture to say 10, 20x better. Because the moment you start to see these things, you start to see where your actual perspective shifts happen and what has meaning. And because of that, your growth, it, it, it becomes exponential. Mm -hmm. Because you start to see the meaning in those moments, the answers to those whys. Like, it doesn't... It's not, it's not something that's just a routine anymore. Like, here's the thing. Something I learned in art when I would draw still lifes, because I had to do that for years, before I even, when you guys are asking me, like, how do you learn to draw? It's like, so the roadmap for that for me started, like, way back when I was in grade school. I took art classes, and the first art class I took was at a library, public library. And it was because, you know, my mom had me do it put me in those classes, you know, so, holy shit, I just completely lost my train of thought, I don't know where I was going with that, so, that's um, the end I of have, that, I have a I question, yeah, um, I was asking my friend Anthony, uh, a while ago, like, a couple months ago, when we were trying, circling around this stuff, too, I go, what did Jesus say to people, like, the actual words? that got them to like break down like their entire shell with one thing. And he told me there wasn't really any specific words that was just right on point to exactly what they needed to know when they needed to know it. So my question is, did, is this present in any religion? No. Any religious text or anything like that? Like the, the why, the because, like the how you engage with people, the how. Um, I don't think it is. I've never heard anything like this. Not really, no. Like the generality, not the specifics of no. one on one. No, I agree with you. And here's the thing, and this is why I equate this to not a religion but a philosophy, because what this is allows a person to do, and I think I've probably told you and Tim this already, is that, and we've had discussions about this, John, is, you know, I believe different things, you believe different things, you know, we all have our beliefs. And I think what's really, what's really special about this idea 
is that it doesn't get in the way of what their beliefs are. It allows each person the best version of that that they can. Mm -hmm. It enhances. So, like, if someone's like a Buddhist, right? It's like Star Wars, right? Everybody saw Star Wars around the world, and they loved it. Because a Muslim could see Star Wars and go, I identify with Luke Skywalker, like, fighting for the galaxy. Like, a Jewish person say, I identify with, like, Luke Skywalker. You know, Christians say, I identify, or whatever. Or a yogi, or whatever. Because everybody wants to feel like they're fighting for something. Right? That, that's right. And I think what's really cool about Adam is it, is what we're doing is we're extrapolating like really kind of granular, simple mechanics that when you apply to whoever you are right now, it doesn't, it, it's not like a big finger pointing at you like, you need to be like uh, Adam. You know, that feeling that you get, it's not lecture. It's like, it's, a, it's almost saying, it's not lecturing us on how we should be different. It's how can we become how can we become more of, of a better version of what we are? Mm -hmm. That's what Adam is doing. Yeah. Um, Which I love. I love that. Yeah. No, I mean, to, to Sean's point about religion, I, I really don't think at this moment any of them are solving. And they're, they're, they don't have any immediate answers. I think the reason why most of the older generation is into religion is because it answers a question that they are looking for is, you know, what happens when I die? You know, either you get reborn or you go to heaven or whatever it is. That's that's why I think the older generation connects with religion is because it gives them a reason to live on and then continue to, to do what they're doing and then be at rest when they you know they leave the earth. There's something else that's gonna happen. But I think other than that, like there's no other real answer that's being answered. Yeah. Like I, I went to Catholic school. I think the only thing. I never learned about what religion could do for me. I always learned about what Jesus did. But this happens, and if you do good, you go to heaven. That's all I learned. I never learned what it can do. Why Why is religion good, you know? Which is interesting because that's actually my... That's the viewpoint I always had about religion most of my life. But then I... Um, kind of when I had my huge breakdown after the divorce... Um, I actually, a lot of my growth, I could, I could actually attribute to a deep spirituality, and I, and I learned that there's a, there's a big difference between faith and religion. Um, religion is an organization and rules, and a lot of the bullshit, and, you know, a lot of the structures that people do that have no meaning. Mm -hmm. Faith and spirituality is saying I feel a direct connection to something bigger than me. Mm -hmm. so it's a very different thing. Um, it's something where it's personal. Right, you think that I feel personally led to help people, or personally led that I need to, you know, stop being such an asshole or not be as angry all the time, and try to be more uh, transparent with people. So that to me is the difference between what like religion is. I'm going to go to this building and say a bunch of things I I memorize and then leave. And, and the thing is like. Here's the thing about religion, right? Is they teach you things that like Jesus did, right? It's like, you know, love each other, do all this other stuff, right? Well, then you look at the religion's history. It's like, you guys fucking kill people, you curse it. I mean, you did all this shit. Like, how can you... And, and the funny thing is you learn this as... A, you're like, you're learning all these philosophies at the same time you're taking, like, history class. So it's like, it conflicts each other. It's like, I'm supposed to do good. But then you killed, like, millions of people. Like, what the fuck? Right. So it's like you can't, you can't teach somebody, and you can't believe in a religion that doesn't, you know, you you, you can't do what someone else says if they're not following it. Right. So the, so the way I separate that is that when people killed millions of people, like those are that those are people's. That's kind of how people. That's people acting on a on a belief about things, but I think in the wrong way, because it's not so much about. To me, like any type of faith, you know, whether it's Buddha or Muhammad mm -hmm. or Jesus or, or, you know, the Dalai Lama, it's the person that is kind of espousing those philosophies. I, I analyze what they're saying, but I also know that many people in history have taken that and twisted it a bit to do very terrible things. No, yeah, you're completely right. The bad side of religion, which is awful, and I think it's terrible. 
but I think that if you just look at some of the lessons in themselves from these spiritual teachers, um, it's incredible. If you just look at it one-on-one -on -one and you don't think about how all the other people interpret it, but just think, like, what meaning does this have in me? How does this help me today? Like, what does it really mean to love one another? Right? If someone said, if they said Jesus said love one another, Okay, it's a lesson. He told these guys thousands of years ago if he lived or if he, if he existed as a historical figure. But but apart from whether he even existed or not, what I started doing is just asking these questions and just really thinking about them. Like, what does it really mean to love one another? Mm -hmm. Or love your neighbor as yourself? You know, that's hard to do. It's like not easy. That's that is really hard. hard. That's hard as shit, man. Like, that's something I'm not good at. I'm telling you, but I know. I try every day to get better at that. Because mm -hmm. I know it's the right thing to do. Well, that takes a whole lifetime. Yeah, because doing the right thing is hard. And that's hard. I mean, it's also hard to kill millions of people, too. So I guess Mao Zedong could use that excuse. No, it's easy to do it when you're not doing it, right? If you're true. telling other people to do it, and all you're doing is spouting shit, like, it's easy to do that. Yeah. So... I mean, it's, what's funny is, is these kind of questions could all come from pictures, man. Like, you could take a picture of, like, a, like you in Catholic school when you are a kid, right? Yeah. And, and I was like, why, why, why are you dressed up like that? Because <laughs> mom made me transfer out of public school, and I love public school. Why do you love public school? Because all my best friends were there. Why is that? Because we were, we had all the same classes together, and then we did all the sleepover shit and all that stuff. Right. And we liked all the same stuff. Yeah, actually, I've never had friends like that till like college, like that same type of friend. This is awesome. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so happy right now. I am too. I mean, I think this is the one thing that, it's funny because this is something that we've been doing, but we just never, like, really saw it until we got the artifact, right? Because we've been doing this whole process, especially Sean. I'm telling you, the artifact, right. the artifact is, is what brought this all together. Because yeah. it's easy for me to think of, like, innocent questions in terms of a, of a, of a beginner's mind, but we never personified that. And the moment that, like, it was weird, actually, Tim, because I imagine, from the get-go, for some weird reason, I imagine a robot just looking like you. And so it's easy because I, so for me as a designer, it's easy to tell the story if I start to imagine real-life people I know as those characters. So I don't know if I told you this, but I imagine, all I imagine when I see Adam in the door maker now is Jared's dad. That's it. Yeah, no, me too. It's, he looks like him, he's got the bushy eyebrows, he has a twinkle in his eye. And I'm like, if he was sitting at a desk and carving something and like lovingly kind of like constructing like a humanoid to record, what would it look like? What kind of personality would it have? I'd be like, well, it kind of like look like Finn and kind of act like him. So it was kind of weird. I imagine this small ver wooden version of you on a desk and uh, Jared's dad like carving the back of your head out and putting ears in your head. That's what I was imagining. Yeah. I like all those goofball shots of Finn throwing his hands in the air on one, standing on one leg on top of the spire and peeking out from behind the door. Yeah, he's like the little, he's like the little artifact, right? It's like Adam's trying to build his door and the little artifact's running around and being goofy. With huge oversized glasses. <laughs> yeah, with huge. Now, if you guys noticed, I, I couldn't transfer in the latest versions I did. I couldn't really get the glasses into there, so the way I kind of uh, represented it in a, in, a, in a figurative kind of way is the way that the wood splits on the face. They look like giant glasses over those areas of the head. Yeah. yeah. So it still feels like these weird kind of optics on its face, but it, it, but it's not, it conforms to the head like it's part of the carving. Yeah. I mean, I like I like the minimal one that you like to say because then you can overlay whatever you want on it. And if we wanted to add, you know, more 
I don't know, clothes or hats or whatever the hell, then, you know, that's just like accessory city. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why I, that's actually why um, the second one, the second, the first one on the left, the second row down, that's why I like that one the most because it has the feeling of being, it's close to kind of the marionette, but it still feels very appealing and it looks like it has a personality, even though it's very kind of like naked and blank. Yeah, yeah. The, the, what I see is like right is that the first one is the one that you get, but then the 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 two next to it on that bottom row are like additions that you can do to like kind of modifications. Yeah, that's actually what I was thinking too. That that the like, shapes and stuff. That's like if you wanted to add stuff, it could look like that if you want or not. Oh yeah, definitely. Or like a little hat. See how I have a little, have a little hat on the one on the first row. Is that the hat that you want to give Jared's dad, the donut maker? Yeah, that's actually, that's funny that you even picked up on that. Wow. That's the first thing I picked up on, dude. That, that act, that's amazing, Jim, because, like, yeah, when I was drawing the hat yesterday, I was like, this looks like the hat that Jared's dad would wear with his costume. I actually imagine that, that, like, his dad would have this little hat that's kind of pointed and felt and had a little feather in it with some that, because Jared's dad's kind of rotund, you know, um, oh. and kind of jolly looking, so I imagine it's a little pointed hat that's made out of felt. Then I imagine when he's done making um, the artifact, just so it feels like it's more human, he makes a littler version of his hat and puts it on his head. Mm -hmm. It's sitting there on his desk and he kind of, it's the last thing he does. He's done carving the whole thing. He's put the last complication of the watch here on the back of his head and he's like, it feels like something's missing. And he, he's like, oh, and he kind of looks at himself in the mirror and he sees he has a hat. And then it just shows him stitching a tiny little hat. And then he kind of just puts it on his head, and you just see his index finger, like, tap it to, like, like adjust it onto the head, and that's it. And, it, and the, as the camera turns around, and it cuts to him, like, smiling, like, all proud of himself. Oh, I made a little hat for my, <laughs> for my, for my little hat. <laughs> you guys can imagine, right? Yeah. It, that's how real this world is already. Dude, I smiled, I giggled really hard as soon as I opened up the page. Yeah. I was like, I love these guys. This world is so real already. And this world is, it's a, it's an amalgam of all the people involved. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling, um, I think I was telling you or Sean that, you know, I've kind of worked you into this. I've worked Jared's dad into it. But eventually, I'll be working, it, like, Everybody that's a part of this family, they're gonna be a part of this world in some way or another. It's just you can't force it. It just kind of happens, yeah. right? So you find each person's personality and you inject them into this world because then it's it, it's just so the world is so much more rich then. Because then when I think of the 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 artifact, I don't have to I don't have to analyze it anymore. I don't have to think about well is this or that or is, you know fundamentally extrapolated i just have to think does it feel like that this personality reflects my friend mm -hmm. that has the characteristics that i think this character you know has this is primary kind of almost wants desires um like what part of their life they're in because then you just observe the person and they tell you like it's all there mm -hmm. Yeah, Paddock Philippe, man. Could you imagine, like, at the Paddock Philippe store, John? Wait, was there a Paddock Philippe store in Madison? In Madison, what? On New in New York, when we walked along that fancy. Oh, on Madison Avenue. Yeah. Um, they opened their first uh, retail store in New York a couple months ago. I don't know where. I can't remember where it is. But yeah, they hadn't even had its own retail store. They had just been distributed by like Turneau and authorized dealers. We have to put that onto a list of places to uh, visit. Could you imagine if we did something with Paddock Police? <clears throat> like, they would want to display this in their store. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're so like upper end elegant, like even not having a watch. Um, uh, I don't know if they would ever do it, but I'm sure I know that there would be some watch company that would want to get involved for sure. Yeah, e 
even if it's like not Paddock police, but it's like any anybody that prides himself in the idea that the gears are, you know, that they, they the are, are life, yeah. They are a soul unto right. themselves. And so let and you never know. Fuck it, let's do Paddock. That's what I want to do, and they're gonna give me a watch too. <laughs> Yeah, I know you're obsessed about that. So, I mean, if, if we know that they're quality, I mean, let's keep that in the back of our head. Because yeah. you never know. So I'm going to design the back gear uh, complications of this character today. Um, and it's gonna, I'm going to model it after. Uh, I'm going to look closer to Paddock Police stuff. And I want the gears. Now, you can see in the first kind of take I did of it, the rough version, Mm -hmm. That even now it looks like it, it is the gear work in some of the stuff, but it look if you glance at it, it looks like kind of a rough representation of our logo also. Yeah, I see the yeah I see the the marking on, on yeah. the bottom. Yeah, that's okay. cool. So that was the idea that I wanted to just even show on top of that. Not only was it gears in the back of his head, but this gears turn actually show our icon like actually working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It is the Newman. The artifact is the Newman. Yeah, it's head. This is nuts. Like, I'm so thrilled about it. What we what we figured out in the past. Five months. Well, what we figured out in the past hour of this discussion is, is literally the convergence of all this stuff together. It's all starting to like converge and like it, it towards its point. It's like it's very, very bright right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I know what I have to do today. Yeah, I think what I'm going <laughs> to do is take all this stuff that we just talked about and, and work it into confide a little bit because I had some ideas and I was like, oh, so I, I, I was going through this process like when I talked to my friends like what is it that I, I mostly do and why do they keep coming to me it's because I don't give them advice I just listen for the whole time and just ask okay and like and I ask the question why really and and it'll lead to them coming to this realization and and one thing I came to was that you know it takes a while to come to this realization but it also takes a lot of support and maybe if we could have some way of you know having an email come out to you showing like each of those icons that like that like every week you get one email it's like these are the people that you know understand you or you know or whatever it is and then it also gives you like a, a quote or, or like an email that someone wrote to you. you know how you send letters to yourself in the future maybe like it's something like someone else says like you know a weekly thing that you get one so like if people wrote you a hundred you'll have like a hundred weeks of like motivation yes uh, Ken, I think um, if you kind of go through the recording of this conversation today, yeah, no, I definitely and, think and take, and take notes. I think that is going to give you a lot of answers for all the stuff you're asking right now. Like if you just go through it again, take notes, and then we have them up there. And at the same time, I think it's going to answer uh, a lot of these things you're talking about. Oh no, no, yeah, definitely. That's what I was going to do. I think, yeah, yeah I, I think so many things were solved in this conversation. Is it's yeah. uh, definitely something that I would have to do to kind of figure out because there was a lot of things I think that are important that that we just solved but everything feels so natural and it's something that just happens in a daily conversation yeah. that it, it has a lot to do with Confide I, and I honestly seen Confide working into the app really that whole process you know of like just talking through that maybe because we don't have to build a separate platform. Yeah, so make sure when you take these notes that you spec out the four, it's like the three three statements, right? This because that, and then the why is, the because is the answer to the why. Mm -hmm. So this because that, and then the question is why, which is what, you know, the, where the because comes from. Um, and then also kind of notes on the fact that, that it's just not, you know, it's just not the stories, the ends and the beginning of stories that have perspective shift. The actual story itself is perspective shift. So it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of drill down into those things, um, and I think that if what you're talking about, this uh, confide thing, it needs to somehow fit 
very comfortably into that. There, there's an answer to how to get all these complex mechanics to work, and it should conform almost like a sweat to the surface of an orange with all the stuff we just um, uh, we were just talking about. Yep. Yeah, you're you're coming at it from the very uh, personal and hard to talk about end, mm -hmm. and the stuff we've been talking about is the very surface level. So ideally, they should be one in the same, and you should be able to like navigate over that continuum mm -hmm. easily. But I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it almost is like one of those uh, hourglasses with sand in it, where you flip it. Like you flip one way, and it moves towards the center flip it the other way and it moves towards the center. I don't know, but I agree with Nick that if we do this right, it should have confide and in this entertainment value all rolled up into one, and it can just naturally emerge from yeah. this basic seed or atom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something um, I forgot to tell you guys, and I, I kind of didn't this until after I uploaded the photos of my drawings. Um, but there was, and I want you to pay attention to this because I, I, I'm actually going to play this up more in the next design of this, the, the design of this uh, of artifact, um, tying it down more. If you see the one we, we picked, the, the one in the second row, mm -hmm. the difference between that one, there's a subtle difference in the eyes between that and all the other ones. It's that I drew the eyes solid black, which I like because it kind of gives it this friendly look without being too kind of in your face. Uh, but if you notice, I have the center of those kind of dark circles, they kind of glow. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So it's like a, almost like a blank space that goes back into this wooden face, but it's showing that there's an actual backlight, like there's a soul behind those kind of dots that, that are kind of bored out into that wood. Mm -hmm. I actually see that when you get this toy, it, just, it does, like you were saying, Sean, it feels like almost the front like the wooden front of a map. Um, so it, 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 it's kind of an allegory to the masks we wear, too. Um, there's a lot of interesting things in that, but if you have the glowing of the eyes from behind that, um, it just becomes this kind of fascinating uh, kind of trope on, you know, what faces in the front and the back, but like kind of what the gears in the back, the power actually do um, power through the front. And there's also that phrase that the eyes are the window into the soul. Um, so the light that is coming out through those eyes is actually the same light that's coming out from the movement device in the back, which act where all the actual processing happens. Mm -hmm. So actually, I imagine the eyes glowing, the gears in the back head glowing, and then you see how I have the atom symbol, the um, carved into his chest. Yeah. I see that glow too, mm -hmm. and this would be wood. And then the joints between it would be metallic. So it would be metal, wood, and then electric. Like, all in one. So our logo is what glows, basically. Yeah. Word up. Right. And if you look there, I'm sorry, just one last thing. The eye flow, this is the orb above the head, so it actually represents three um, spheres hovering above the, uh, the chevron, but mm -hmm. it's the head. Yeah, yeah, it's the chevron and the three dots that glow. Yeah. The, lo the logo, you already know, though. Yeah. So, okay, so then we can become Gordon Freeman for Halloween. I just need something on my head to go <laughs> at Comic-Con. We will do that. I, I don't know when, but we will have you dressed up in armor and walk on Comic-Con. That'll happen. All right, I'm excited to draw right now, and I haven't eaten. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little hungry. Starving. So I'm going to go do that and yeah. work on this. All right, sounds cool. All right, uh, yeah, can, uh, whenever you have the notes up, just let us know so I can look through them again, because I, I want to look at them again, too. Yeah, uh, for now, I'm going to upload it to Dropbox to make sure that every time, like, Tina doesn't want to hear it, uh, but I'm going to write notes, and I'll upload it to Evernote, too. Do you think, do you guys think we should... I know we had talked before about finding a place to upload all these things. I was thinking, was it possible? Because I tried doing it on YouTube. It takes like 12 hours to convert into a, a MP3. 
then it takes like another twelve hours to upload to YouTube. Uh, what about SoundCloud? Um, you only get two hundred megs worth uh, of users. There's okay. gotta be a podcasting hosting I w- service. Somewhere. I was thinking maybe we could set up like a blog where we just throw on audio files. Yeah, but you still have to ser- you still have to like you still have to like store that in a server somewhere. That's you know? True. Yeah. What we need is the bandwidth and space somewhere. I I don't know if that exists. Yeah, like Tumblr lets you upload files, so it doesn't work straight from the Mac. You have to convert it, and I don't know how long it would let you go. Yeah. I mean, it's really like a podcast, right? Because they're so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The question is, podcast. how did the how do the podcasters do it? You're right. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. I'll, I'll put that on my thing to do today. Yeah, because if we had like an Adam. Yeah, it would be like an Adam podcast. Yeah, an internal podcast. Yeah, that anybody can stay up to date on other other meetings if they so choose and vote them up and share them around the company or whatever. And then it's more passive instead of, you know, you must. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Can we be somewhere? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. All right. Tomorrow then. Uh, don't forget tomorrow we have a night meeting. Jared's gonna be on that, and then Thursday I'm gonna meet Tina and uh, Jared for coffee. Okay. Cool. All right. Good. Yeah, I'm trying to get them closer together, us, all of us, so then we have a better understanding of each one. Good. All right. All right, guys. Cool. Good. Today was a good day. Let's make it even better now. Right on. All right. Bye, Bye.